Hello, Samma, and uh, and thanks for making uh, some time to to talk to me from uh, from uh, Palestine. Um, I wanted briefly to ask you about the the situation in terms of the coronavirus in in Palestine at the moment. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you and to respond to your questions. Thank you for your interest. Uh, you know, Palestine is geographically uh, very fragmented, so. Uh, there are different uh, measurements and different policies in each part of Palestine. Yeah, I'm talking to you from Jerusalem, but I work in the West Bank, and uh, my clinical uh, involvement and uh, professional involvement is related to uh, uh, creating a medical response and, in particular, a mental health response to the cri to the to this emergency in the West Bank. Uh, and uh, there is a similar situation, but with some differences in Gaza as well. So there is a lockdown in uh, most of the areas, the big cities and towns in the West Bank. Uh, children have not been going to school. There is a significant reduction in the workforce uh, in certain villages and towns where um, affected people were identified. There is a very strict lockdown and people are asked to stay in their own town, not going, even, even professionals who are part of the uh, workforce that needs to move, they are asked to stay where they are. What about professionals, so Palestinians from the West Bank that have work in, in Israel? How does it sort of work for them? That's the, uh, the particular uh, difficulty that we are facing right now, because so far things are under control in Palestine. We've been doing a good job at identifying cases uh, who come uh, from the Jordanian border or from Israeli areas and um, um, uh, trying to trace their contacts, identifying them and uh, uh, putting them in, asking people to, sway, to stay in quarantine. And there is not a big number of cases identified. Today, we have 155 affected people. Uh, one person, a 60-year-old woman, passed away. And um, we have um, a, like dozens of people who recovered from, uh, from um, the virus. Actually, it was first identified in Bethlehem, a touristic area. And uh, it was uh, after the visit of some tourists who um, uh, were uh, infected by the virus. Um, so the, the, the uh, critical moment will be when Palestinian workers, and we have tens, tens of thousands of Palestinian workers who will be coming uh, at the evening of the Pesach holiday, of Easter holiday, uh, to Palestinian uh, territories. Uh, we're talking about almost 50,000 uh, workers who have been working there for um, a month or so. And uh, already some were uh, noticed by the Israeli employer uh, to be sick, and they were... Uh, uh, arrested by uh, police and brought against their will to the uh, Palestinian checkpoint. So we expect more affected people uh, by the virus uh, to come when the workers come back. And um, uh, at the Ministry of Health, we are negotiating ways to um, identify the people who uh, got the virus at an early stage and do what, whatever is necessary to uh, prevent that they pass the virus to other people. In terms of, uh, of number of beds, in terms of masks, in terms of, uh, of testing, ventilators, um, I mean, I'm talking especially in the West Bank now because that's where you work, yes. do you feel you, you're, you're ready, or there could be a critical stage um, where it, it won't be enough for, for everybody? In, in fact, we are not more ready than Italy or Spain or France. Um, 
uh, and we realized that right from the beginning. That's why we were quick and early at uh, 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 emphasizing prevention and primary health care. So uh, uh, the lockdown started on the 6th of um, March, just after the identification of the first person who was affected in the Tlaham area. So uh, uh, we have a small number of ventilators in the West Bank. It's estimated the government has 58 ventilators, but some private centers and hospitals um, and uh, three Arab hospitals in Jerusalem, they have more ventilators. We have 200. So we ask the donors to provide 200 more ventilators. And already in some Palestinian universities, they are working on uh, uh, creating ventilators, local ventilators, in case uh, there is a big shortage. Um, also, uh, there is some shortage in the disposable uh, material, like uh, the PPE, um, protection, uh, personal protection equipment, uh, and masks. Um, and because we expected that our tertiary response uh, will be uh, not as strong as it is in European countries or in, in, in other regional countries, so uh, the, we invested a lot in mobilizing the people, in educating them about the virus, in asking people to stay in their uh, uh, small zones in order to be able to control the, the infection. There is a small growth in the numbers of identified people. Uh, it's not exponential like in other countries, uh, but the critical moment will be when the workers come back home. Can you comment on, on, on the situation in, in uh, Gaza briefly because uh, and the potential impact of, of the blockade as well by, by Israel, the European Union, how is it affecting uh, Gaza directly, if, if you can comment on this? I am in touch with some colleagues in Gaza. I understand that there is no lockdown in Gaza. The people who were identified were identified early on at the borders, and they um, any suspected person will stay in quarantine there. And a few people uh, among those who were suspected were identified. And uh, they are recovering well. Uh, so things are still under control. Nevertheless, the Ministry of Health is also preparing hospital and an emergency plan for hosp hospitals there in case there will be uh, an infection. Because so far also, the primary health response is very good and it's controlling things before they um, uh, become uh, uh, before we get a high number, uh, high numbers of infected people, um, but uh, but there is a an emergency plan with scenario A, B, C. Um, uh, it, it will be difficult if uh, people inside Gaza start getting the infection because of the overcrowdedness. Because uh, when we ask people to be in quarantine at home or stay at home. Uh, we can imagine a big number of people stay in uh, very small homes with this overcrowdedness. The concerns are more serious there. And one of my fi final questions, you, you work in mental health. Um, can you tell us about, because I mean, I guess the sort of socio-economic um, and health impact of, of, um, of the virus and, and the COVID-19 crisis uh, are, are felt very much so as well in Palestine, a state that is already economically highly dependent on, on, on Israel and the rest, right? Of course, yes. I am a psychiatrist. I work in uh, the field of mental health. And um, uh, I'm now uh, responsible for um, creating a mental health response, a national mental health response. I'm coordinating things between different NGOs working in the field of mental health and the Ministry of Health. Um, and uh, of course, the, uh, there is a, 
psychosocial aspect of this infection that is very important. Uh, panic and anxiety and stress can also be contagious. Um, and uh, so we have a plan now that has three important elements. The first one is to provide psychological first aid for the affected and their family members if they need it. Where we go, explain to people that this um, might be stressful for you to know that you are positive, that the test is positive and you have to stay in quarantine or you have to, to be in medical isolation. And, uh, and then we leave them with a phone number of a team where they can seek help if they feel they need help. We explain that stress is, is normal because of that situation and there might be uh, some uh, reaction to that. And if you feel these reactions, you can seek help. So that's the first element. And the second element is the creation of a hotline where the general public, who are not necessarily affected, but they are anxious about what's going on, they will call and seek help. And the third element is that we want our usual psychiatric patients who seek help, but now because of the lockdown, they cannot reach the um, uh, mental health centers. Uh, we don't want that system to collapse. So they can. We are providing alternatives that includes a, a phone contact with their therapists. People will get their medications at home or at the closest mental center, a, a medical center to their home. We make sure that there is enough medical supply. We are trying to educate the families so that they contain the patients and the people who were in institutions when they return home and stay at home for a while in the lockdown conditions. So a lot of that work is being organized because we see that uh, the mental health response is uh, an integral part of our medical and health response in general to this emergency. And uh, you can imagine Palestinians have been stressed because of many other reasons, the, the, the occupation, the political violence, the economic, economic factor. And uh, uh, so this adds to all this stress. But at the same time, Palestinians survived many difficulties and uh, uh, they survived bombardment and uh, curfews and uh, a, a siege in Gaza. So I think that uh, they will be dynamic in reacting to this emergency.